Hello. Is my audio working? No. Hi. I just got a message from Dan, but he's late and I am, I got my time zones mixed up, so I am arriving. Do folks have the meeting notes? Hi, Sarah. Hello. Do we have scribe volunteers? Take the template. Apologies for not coordinating today's meeting. So I signed up to scribe, but I need um, someone else to second it because I'm going to talk a bit about the OPA security assessment thing. Thank you, Justin. Any, do we have any other volunteers? Also, if people could add themselves as participants, now that the template's there. I think we have a few new people, if I'm recognizing. In case anybody doesn't have the calendar invite, I'll put the minutes and agenda in the chat. Hi, I'm new and I don't exactly have everything pulled up in front of me because I'm driving. So um, I was hoping that somebody could send me an email or comment me with the information. I can give you my email. Who, who's me? Emily yeah. Fox. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your What's your email, Emily? The M O X I E F O X A T W O R K at gmail dot com. Should read the Moxie Fox at work at gmail. Okay. Thank you so much. I just added you to the attendance. All right, and you should receive an email from me in a moment. Thanks, Justin. <clears throat> so I'll help scribe, uh, or somebody else. Um, I can scribe too. Is it just in the um, in the in the Google Doc that we're scribing yeah, at? Yeah, so the idea is just to having two people. So when one okay. person's blocking the other person, so that that's great. Then I can focus more on facilitating. Sounds good. And uh, I'm Karthik. Uh, nice to meet everyone. I was at um, uh, Justin's at session at KubeCon, and he was like, "Don't lurk, just show up." So here I am. Excellent. Thanks, Karthik. So, um, so yeah, we'll start with. Um, I think that we don't have any big agenda items. And we have a bunch of new people, so let's do our attendance stand up. And that is um, where we each say our name and a little bit of who we are and kind of what we've done on security stuff or what might be relevant to the group, share something about the last week. So I'll start. My name is Sarah Allen. I'm one of the co-chairs of this group. In the last week, I um, have been traveling and um, was at KubeCon and um, did a PR on that a bunch of people, bunch of people signed up, uh, chimed up on, which is turning our past events into something in the repo so that we can make note of any security related things at KubeCon where we thought there were interesting sessions, both ones 
that people in this group gave and ones we attended that were interesting. And then I thought we could, when the videos come out, then we can pull in all the videos and people who weren't at KubeCon can see interesting security related things or um, we can see ones that we missed. And then the other th big news is I did a lot of PRing over the last couple of weeks on governance. And today I noticed that the CNCF vote on our becoming an official SIG is um, up for voting now. So um, I'll dig up a link and put it in the notes. But I'm, I'll just call on people because I think the order is um, sometimes a little non-deterministic. Um, so, um, and Justin, why don't I leave you for last so you can close with the OPA stuff. And I'm gonna pick um, Mark Underwood because you've been here before. And you can kind of, people can kind of hear how this attendance stand-up thing goes. Are you muted, Mark? We'll wait a second to see if he unmutes. Or maybe we'll keep going. I'll pick, I'll, I'll just pick from the bottom. So new people, just Zach Arnold. Hi. Hello. How are things? Hello. Um, as you said, my name is Zach. I work for uh, a, a money company, Y Green Energy Fund. Um, and uh, I've actually been uh, sort of like, I've, I've been mostly assisting out in um, SIGs in Kubernetes, played around docs, and we have kind of a special interest in security in our company and we're working with Justin uh, Kapos and he suggested that I join and here I am. So hello. Hi, thanks Zach. Um, Michael Hausenboss. Hello and welcome. Um, <laughs> uh, I, it's my first time here so I'm uh, responsible for container security at AWS. And um, yeah, I know some faces from the dinner last week and super excited to be here, starting to contribute going forward. Great. Um, Michael Ducey. Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm Michael Ducey. If you um, haven't met me before, I'm one of the leads on the Bongo project. Uh, so over the last week, as Sarah said, uh, we're at KubeCon. Um, our kind of takeaway from that conference is there was a lot of good energy around Falco. Um, we had uh, a lot of people coming up to us, talking to us about it, uh, offering to contribute to the project and other things like that. So we really like to see that uh, we're really, feels like we're building a project that people are interested in uh, and, and uh, can contribute really greatly to the security community. We're also really excited that SIG security is finally uh, becoming a real thing within the CNCF. Uh, I feel like it's something that we've needed for a long time, so that's also great to see. And I'll add my comments to that TLC uh, thread that they opened up. Awesome. Yes, everybody can vote plus one non-binding binding if you think we should be a SIG. Um, thanks, Michael. Um, and, and Michael, you're also here in part, you're also interested in, in being the subject of a security audit soon, right? Having Falco be that? Yes. A security uh, assessment. The and assessment. audit. Yeah, we're, we're, um, we've already kind of agreed to, with Cure53 around kicking off the audit the last two weeks, the security audit that the CNCF is funding the last two weeks of June. Uh, so whatever we need to do with the SIG security group, uh, I know Lorenzo and Leonardo are, are trying to put those things in place to do the assessment and other things like that as well. So let us know how we can be involved or what we need to do, rather. Great. Um... So, uh, so yeah, I think we actually, now we have a template and a process. So Justin, can you take the action item of kicking off a issue and tagging um, the Falco folks in on that? I wanna, I wanna say uh, Lorenzo is opening an issue around the assessment. Okay, well that works. 
Um, all right, why don't we go to Lorenzo next? I think you're muted, Lorenzo. Because you're in the it's my room. fault. We're trying to share a speaker that didn't have video on different laptops. <laughs> yeah. So my uh, I, was, I was saying that I'm glad to see a lot of known faces from uh, the dinner here. And super cool that a lot of you uh, started to join the call. This is my, just my second call. I'm super excited to see you. Um, so for the assessment, uh, me and Leonardo here have been working on um, identifying the, the personas that need to be uh, in the assessment first before opening the issue. We didn't want to open it uh, totally like empty. We have seen the one that Justin Capos, if I remember to open for OPA, uh, and we are trying to do the same thing. Then uh, we understood that there were the, the template, but uh, well. Um, so we are just like putting all of that together and we will open an issue soon. Um, so when we have like people that are really committing to be like the least security engineer or whatever. So um, we uh, will open that. Great, so. okay, thank you. Um, Lorenzo. Do you mean to go? Lorenzo Fontana, do we have more than one? No, I only I'm confused. Are you jet lagged, Sarah? Oh, wait, no, I meant, yeah. I I just, just uh, I'm so confused. Sorry. Leo, I meant. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, this is my first time. Interview. Time here. And uh, I'm glad to see a lot of faces we had dinner together in Barcelona. And uh, as Lorenzo was saying, uh, we are working towards that uh, security assessment for Falco. One of the first things uh, I was trying to get in place uh, is to obtain a channel, uh, public, a channel in the CNCF Slack for the security assessment of Falco, since it's one of the bullet points. And then, uh, we, as Lorenzo already said, uh, oh, we are working together to identify the persons, the, the, the that we need to involve uh, on our side and on the external side uh, for the assessment. And that's it. Basically, that's it. Great. Thanks, Leo. Lance. Hi. So I'm relatively new to uh, the CNCF space. Uh, Dim's actually suggested that I stop by. Um, I've worked in a couple of different uh, communities, specifically around auth and uh, authorization, authentication, stuff like that. So first time here, excited to get up to speed and uh, participate where I can. Welcome. And uh, Karthik, thank you for Hello. Oh yeah, you bet. Um, my name is Karthik, uh, I work at Oracle. Uh, I have done a bunch of like random stuff uh, around auth and just different things in the DevOps space. Um, I've been talking about Kubernetes security at like different conferences and uh, kind of wanted to, you know, join the SIG to actually help with like some of the core stuff in there. So, um, yeah, just looking forward to interacting with everyone and uh, taking this to cool new places. Great. Thanks. Um, Joshua Locke or Josh. <clears throat> yeah, Joshua. I work at VMware um, and the Open Source Technology Center. Um, was at KubeCon last week and met some of the folks on the call and uh, just looking uh, for ways that my team and I can contribute. So, um, yeah, got a lot of experience in the open source distro space, but not a lot in the open source cloud space. So looking forward Wonderful. to learning more. Lots to do. Daniel. Uh, hi, my name is Daniel Zirov. I'm a security engineer in Adavinta. Uh, I was in KubeCon last week and I saw a couple of um, good talks uh, for, and I decided to join the SIG to contribute uh, somehow. Super, welcome. Um, Anthony. Electronic Arts, the gaming company, um, but 
prior to that, I have experience uh, with penetration testing and various security review roles um, at a previous, uh, I was for a third party um, reviewer assessor. So uh, just interested to help however I can and, and provide input where I can. Thanks, Anthony. Um, and then also um, for next time, people have requested that sometimes it's easier to understand people if they're willing to put the camera on when you're speaking. So, um, so if people have a camera and um, can share, that'd be great. Um, and Mark, I don't know whether you have audio. Um, there you go. We can't seem to hear you, or I can't. The hotspot decided to drop me right when I started talking. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm um, the co-chair of the NIST Big Data Working Group, Security and Privacy Subgroup. Um, the interesting thing from last week that I want to share with the group is we're going to be collaborating with the HL7 a security and privacy group to produce a working document to crosswalk between these two standards bodies. So I don't have a suspect yet who's going to collaborate with me, but we're putting out a call to the big HL7 security uh, subgroup. Um, those of you not familiar with HL7, it's a, it's a you know, kind of the electronic uh, health record standard um, in, in specifically, this is the fire interface, which is their newest, uh, newest technology. They have a, a premature uh, methodology for things ranging from provenance to authentication to uh, governance around uh, data sharing that's highly granular. So looking forward to that, and I'll, and I'll share back to this group as we move along with that. Great to see the new faces, by the way, here for Betty. Great. And, um, Will you got drop a link to that if it hasn't already gotten into the notes? Is there sure, like is there a website for the HL7? Thanks, Mark. All right. So um, did I get everybody except Justin? Is there anybody I missed? Oh, on the phone, Emily. Hi, I'm Emily Fox. I work for the National Security Agency. Um, I hit up Justin Cormack on Twitter after um, his presentation at KubeCon because a lot of the stuff that you guys are currently working on or figuring out is stuff that I've already done. Um, so I thought I would chime in and assist where I can along with your processes. So that's about it. Fabulous. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and so Justin Capos is actually facilitating coordinating our many volunteers to, um, uh, to on the security assessments. And so, Justin, if you would also, um, for the new folks, introduce the process a little bit, as well as giving your update on OPA. Sure, sure, I can do that. Um, okay, so I'm Justin Capos. I'm a professor at NYU. Um, I'm also like the creator and maintainer of TUF and um, one of the co-creators of Intoto and a bunch of other stuff like this. Um, and I think the assessment process that we have largely came out of um, an assessment that I did for Spiffy Inspire. Uh, so I've been doing these kinds of assessments in part uh, in my role at the university, working with a lot of startups and groups like this over the last, I don't know, like probably six, seven years. And um, taking ideas from that and experience from other people in the group, we wanted to have a more standardized method for doing this um, as part of the CNCF process. So I will post a couple of documents here into the, um, into the um, chat part of this. So Emily, apologies for this. I'll send them to you in a moment as well. But the documents I'm posting here are two example. Um, one is a, a document that, uh, hold on, let me send this to Emily real quick. Then, uh, now, now you're seeing my inability to multitask effectively with this. Okay, so uh, effectively the process itself that we go through is uh, that the, um, the project comes to us and wants to have, sorry. So the goal of what we're trying to do is we want there to be an assessment and the assessment is not meant to be the same as like a code audit. The assessment is meant to be um, an examination to understand things like, are they solving 
um, a problem in a meaningful way? Are they likely to have major security holes in the way that they're solving things? Is there um, you know, any risk that projects take on by using the software and, and so on? So it's meant to be um, uh, not, not like a code audit, but uh, it probably can find problems at sort of the high level design level and can be used later on uh, so we can point out to auditors or others, these are areas we think are especially important to focus on um, and also gives a little bit of high level context to someone who wants to protect, perhaps use the project uh, so that they have some understanding of um, the potential risks or other security mechanisms that are needed or um, you know more than just you would get from a marketing blurb from a project like, hey, we secure X. Well, what, what do you mean by secure? You know, that's a very loaded uh, word. So as part of this process, um, we've gone through and uh, done a few different assessments. The, uh, the first two assessments were done in parallel in Toto and OPA. Um, since in Toto is a project that I'm like a co-creator and heavily involved in, um, I wasn't involved, of course, in that assessment because that would be something of a conflict. Uh, but the OPA assessment is one that I also had sort of planned to talk about in this meeting to give people a heads up about where we're at. And it might also be a good one to look at as a general introduction to uh, what we do in the security assessment process. So I promise I'll try to keep this pretty brief just so you get a high level. Um, there's a ton more detail about all of this in the repo and the documentation. But um, there's a few, uh, the SIG security assessment OPA document um, is the one I'm referring to here. This, this is a document that's written by the project themselves that is sort of their initial gathering of information that we need in order to do a meaningful assessment. And uh, this gathering of, of information explains all the types of high-level things I mentioned before. And it also describes um, it, just sort of the project's view of itself, its practices, how people are supposed to operate the project and use it in a cloud-native context, um, and, and also things around, you know, for instance, the development and security issue reporting uh, mechanisms and stuff like that for the project. So as a result of, of doing this assessment, um, they go, they provide that, they provide it to whoever is leading the security assessment. Um, in this case, it was, it was me. And then I respond with um, what we call the dumb question phase. And the dumb question phase is... Uh, really just trying to get clarifications in the document so that a reader that um, isn't as up to speed on the project or maybe as up to speed in every case with security has an actual understanding about um, what the project's trying to say and what the project is and, and you know, what the document means. So it's in part, it's, you know, it's some low level stuff like getting people to define terms, but it's also getting them to be just a lot clearer about what they mean as they talk through different aspects of what their project does. Following this, um, the group of security assessors, um, which we had, I think, four participate in this one, we went through and we did a pretty uh, deep uh, dive into the document. Um, I think we say it takes about 10 hours to do uh, for an assessor. In my experience, it was very slightly more than that, but not substantially more. I'd actually expected leading it, it would take me a lot more but um, it maybe was 15 hours or something like that. Um, and based on that, we try to get that document to be clarified and all the potential security issues and things like that for them to revise the document in a, in a meaningful way that explains um, their view on what the project security is. Uh, following that process, we also, as a, the SIG security uh, like sub team that's doing the assessment, write up a document that's about a page. You see there's a document that's a little more than a page I also sent that goes through and basically describes what we believe um, the project security posture is and um, you know, like sort of uh, what are the benefits, what are the things to look at. And if someone like the TOC were going to go and do an assessment, what would the TOC um, perhaps uh, want to, or sorry, an audit, what, what would the TOC want the auditors to explore and what priority would they have for them and so on. 
Um, and as these, this one and the Intoto assessment, um, I, I think the Intoto assessment's in a very similar state where we're just waiting right now for, um, I, I don't know what, but uh, the OPA assessment has been passed back to the uh, OPA team. Um, they're going to look over our assessment, maybe have some comments or questions or things that they'd like us to, to talk about here. Um, there are a few, uh, I see there are a few comments and things in here as well for areas that um, we, we need to address. But then the idea would be is that both of these documents would, both their full long assessment and our kind of summary of this would uh, go in a public place um, in our repo and probably also be linked to off of the the project site. Um, and they would also be uh, provided to the TOC when the TOC is trying to decide what to do to vote on a project to have the projects in enter incubation or sandbox or graduation or whatever. Uh, so I've said a lot and uh, I'd like to pause now and have anybody ask questions and so on. Are there any questions? Hi, this is uh, this is Pavan. Um, I have a question around the assessor. Actually, I, I was in the talk that um, was given by Justin last week, and uh, there is Cure Fifty Three as an assessor. Is, is there any plans to have a pool of assessors, or is it just just one assessor? Yeah, there's um, a group that's Trail of Bits, and who's the other person? Uh, Atreides or something? There's so, a there's a Container D, container D has a report and the report says uh, it was assessed by Cure 53. Uh, it's based in Germany. Uh, yeah. So um, I was just wondering, it, yeah, it'd be we, nice to we, have- We've had an assessment by them as well. But okay. um, there, is, there are a pool of assessors. There is another team that's Trail of Bits and another security consultancy that I don't recall the name of, but it starts with an A. And so they're colloquially, their assessments are colloquially being called trail of whatever the A name is. Um, so there are two assessor groups now, Cure 53 as a single entity and the trail of bits plus the other group. And Justin, um, using yeah, our no, nomenclature, those are audits and we're, and yes. the assessments are a different process. Yes. Which we're doing as a SIG. Right. So I, I think for the time being, we're the only groups that are doing assessments. Um, but the assess, like if you've had an audit, then you've probably, you know, you, you've gotten a deeper level dive than what you'll usually get from the assessment. Although I think the assessment process is a good precursor because the documents and reports that come out of that will be very handy for anybody who wants a, um, like a quicker look at what's happening. I think the the audits, like if you look at our Cure 53 audit or you look at some of the other security audits we've had, they tend to be very much written for the project's consumption. Um, and the point of the audit that we're doing is it's really written for, or the assessment that we're doing. Those uh, The document we produce is really meant more for the public and also for the TOC. Um, and so I, I think there's some, you know, there's some value in, in having that context, especially for projects that aren't, or for, for people that are trying to decide what projects they might want to adopt and don't want to read through um, a bunch of like, oh, we found a buffer overflow here and we found um, this issue there, many of which have already been fixed. Yeah, that was my question. How to so get I have a different question and it, it might not have been clear to me on the site and going through some of the docs the and security assessment is more of the review of the proposal template that they're filling out submitting an issue to get for and that's intended to be prior to incubation prior to entrance into the incubation phase of cncf is that correct so the idea is that the toc will ask us to assess some projects that have that they are that have been proposed to the CNCS, it's CNCF okay. at whatever level. And then mm -hmm. once we've done an assessment, we would redo it annually. We would only okay. use 
the like sort of sandbox to incubation or incubation to graduation, if if there were some things flagged that we said, well, we'd expect this to be fixed in a certain amount of time or something, then the TOC might ask us to take another look at it, regardless of the annual review cycle. But the, the, and the assessment we're doing is a bit decoupled from the graduation stages. Okay, and the assessment is independent, but can, can contribute to the audit. And the audit occurs at later stages, correct? Yeah, so the audit occurs d during incubation before graduation, typically. Although I think, you know, like it could happen, um, it could happen at other times at the discretion of the TOC. And right. is and the. It, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, Emily, this is all a new process. So you should okay. treat everything we're telling you as what we think is happening at this moment, but everything could change in the next. You know, it could change tomorrow as far as we know. There, there's not a solid track record of this yet. Yeah, and generally our process, just for context, is we're going through this, and then we're, we've set a checkpoint after we do um, five of these so that we can reflect on it. But your feedback okay. and are totally welcome, and thank you. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's more what I was asking. It's like, how young is this process? Where does it need to go? Do you have stuff already written down and documented? A lot of what you guys are saying are things like I kind of guess that, but I wasn't sure if it's written down and being addressed and being adhered to in any of the docs. So, so yeah, so just to um, see this in history, um, we, have, um, we have formalized the process as a SIG that was gone through by individuals at request of the TOC last year. So um, like, so basically the TOC tapped, you know, like Justin Kapos and Justin Cormack and said, hey, can you take a look at these projects, the security profile of these projects for us, right? And then, um, and then we, at, we thought, well, we wanted to do that. Um, we wanted to understand that as a group. And we asked Justin Kapos to present what he'd done with Spiffy and Spire, and then that evolved into this process. And so we, when we've taken in Toto through the process, but it's kind of um, gone through it multiple times as we've uh, shifted the process. So in the assessments directory in the repo is a definition of the process that I believe is exactly what Justin just said but it's possible that it doesn't exactly articulate what we're saying. And so we're in this phase of attempting to follow the process as written, but also adjusting the documentation as needed. And OPA is the first project to go through a written process. And Got it. then we have four of us who've been doing with um, Justin Kapos as an exception, because um, he was on the project side of Intoto, who've been through the Intoto assessment and the OPA assessment and then the idea is that we will add new people into the group and we will have a different group of three or four um, do the assessment so we don't wear out our first four people. <laughs> um, right. You know, do the next few, so that we end up cycling in and expanding to a team of 10 to, so that we have bandwidth to do these different assessments without burning people out. Okay, thank you for the explanation. Yeah, and thanks for asking. Kind of forgot some of the new people might not realize. Yes, we just started this. Um, and, um, but it's, uh, yeah, and I think that the key thing is um, to kind of re attempt to reiterate the point of this is that um, the, it's really, so that people consuming these projects might, like even know, do I want to read the audit of this? What, what things would I look at? Like first I can, figure out whether this project is at a stage and this project does what I think it does or might hope it does, or maybe it doesn't before I would dive deeper into it. So the assumption isn't that somebody looks at our assessment and says, oh, now I know enough to use this project and integrate it and deploy to production. But that is a step that allows them to weed out things that they wouldn't look at further and then know to which things they should look at further. Mm, I don't know if you if it was mentioned, but uh, is there a plan to include uh, like security best practices in the in the assessment? So, for example, how developers are um, developing uh, 
particular application under assessment, uh, meaning uh, scanning for um, code vulnerabilities in a, in CI/CD process, or if it has like a fa user-facing interface. Uh, uh, going through an OWASP checklist, for example, like uh, application security verification standard or something like that. So um, we have we have sort of we we ask um, people right now to kind of report on their where they are on the CII best practices list, and then we're really looking to the right now. It's this self assessment because we are not we don't have believe that we have enough context to put forth all of the best practices. We have a new group with a lot of different opinions and we don't wanna sort of set the bar for documentation weirdly high so that it's too hard to get through. Um, but we do expect some things to emerge from this and maybe Justin Kapos, if you could chime in on that. Yeah, I, I think um, a way to say it is, is that, um, I, like what Sarah said is basically right. We want it to be something like a week or two of effort for the project, like all told, like. And one engine, one to two engineer weeks of effort to get them through this, um, through our assessment. And so we do recommend exactly the types of things that you say here, but there's not, um, in this assessment process, there's not like a real forcing function other than tell us where you're at with CII best practices. Uh, we are also, as a group, there's substantial interest for creating a bunch of tooling and other things that makes it easier for us to um, have sort of best practices for projects overall and, and um, you know, perhaps do scanning and other things of, of cloud native software. Uh, but that's something that uh, is, is not something that has any flesh to it right now. It's just, I think, an idea that several in the group had that I imagine they'll, uh, will pursue and flesh out over the next uh, few months. Also, if people have ideas like that and, you know, particularly specific standards that you think that we might include in the future as recommendations, um, please, like if you're new to the group, read through the issues, um, the open issues. We're trying to develop a tagging system so that they're more approachable, but definitely I, I've been trying to, um, uh, and a few, couple of other people have volunteered to help triage these things so that, um, but it really helps to have other people chime in, in terms of, you know, kind of putting flesh on the bones of the future stuff. And so we kind of queue up things that people are interested in working on in the future through GitHub issues. So definitely welcome. And if, you, if you've read through the issues and you don't, and you, see, and you have a, a question or concern or something you think we should explore, that's not an issue, just write one up. Also, so are there other questions? So I'll take that as a no. Um, I oh, wanted to answer where we were with in Toto, unless that was somebody chiming in with a question. Um, I've just put into the, um, we've got sort of a draft summary, which I just stuck into the docs. I'll actually share my screen. Um, we are, it's the sort of leading vetting of the um, format <laughs> that we're still going through. And so we've gotten to it. So basically to answer Justin's question of where we are is, um, the process was a little interrupted by travel, but basically we want to the, the summary to include links to the issues rather than actually having any issues in the summary because there's a bunch of things that we've gone back and forth and we're like, they're not things that would, they're just FYI, these are things that need to be done. Um, nothing like critical, but um, we, we want those captured. So, um, so we're just sort of going back and sort of writing them up so that the summary can be more concise and just have links to things that are open in GitHub rather than being um, a um, like in the narrative of the um, summary. And then it's also easier because then the status of them is in GitHub rather than in our document, which will become stale. So this is our- Quick the, question. Is this, yep. uh, is this document supposed to be public or is it still like 
uh, hidden? It's, um, it's not secret, but not advertised. So you can drop, if you look at the security assessment issue on GitHub, so I'll, I'll give you a peek into our process. So in our issues, we have a label, which is, this is, sorry, this is the wrong repo. In our SIG security repo, we have, um, in our issues, we have a, a yellow assessment tag and you'll see that we have two in process in Toto and Open Policy Agent. And then this shows that in Toto is, um, you know, like it's actually they're both nine out of 12 check boxes through the process. So this provides it visibility. So if you're, you know, if you're the project or you're interested in where we are in the process, you can be like, oh, look, they're kind of here in the process. And then the, the Slack channel is listed in here. So the Slack channel is public, but it's, you know, you're wearing the weeds of it. So if you're interested, if you want to like dive into this, you can go and dive into the Slack channel and chime in on the docs, but they're, they're really like not ready for consumption because they're in progress and there's still a bunch of notes and wrangling. And so we're basically in the Slack channel with the security reviewers who are volunteers in the SIG and the, um, pro the project lead um, working through open questions and things. And so that's where we're at, where it's just not quite ready to, for us to say, hey, you know, this is our assessment of the project. Right now it's, this is what we think it is and there are some open questions and we're editing it. Um, so, you know, there's already people who've, you know, jumped in in our various Slack channels. And, um, and so it's a, the kind of thing where if you're very interested, you are welcome. But if you just want the results, wait a week or so, <laughs> and it'll be easier to consume. Does that make sense? Yep, gotcha, thanks. And so just as a sort of sneak peek, um, <coughs> is the, um, this is sort of our, um, what we've come up with as a way, like this, the TOC requested like a one slide summary. And then we've come to the, the, the this is kind of a, a short form of the one, page, one to two page document that Justin went through. And so um, we checked in with everybody that like, and I, it's just on me, I was gonna run this by Liz and Joe Beta, who are our TOC liaisons to ask them like, is this the format that you want? Um, so that while we're going through and, you know, you notice there's like an X companies and N issues and there are links here that don't go anywhere. Um, so those are the last things that we're doing because we kind of made up part of this questions after the initial write-up from Intoto. So, um, so that's why the, the data is a little like backfilling based on what we, questions we came up late in the game. So, um, so yeah, so I don't know if anybody has questions or comments on where we're at with this. You said that these one slide is required for all the assessments, right? I'm sorry? You said that this one slide is requested for all the assessments, right? Yes. And so the idea is that typically the um, assessment will happen before the project gives a presentation to the CNCF. And then the ideally the project would be giving a presentation and include this slide that the project would um, communicate. I think in a rare instance, we would, well, we hope, I don't know, we have different thoughts on whether it's rare, but <laughs> in some instances, we may have a disagreement with the project, yeah. in which case the project, you know, like then there would be a different kind of discussion. Of and so, um, but basically the idea is that this is something that ideally we would, and the project would come to an agreement that like, this is kind of what we all think that the project security profile is. And then, um, then it's something that is at the TOC's option presented live, or it could be certainly if it's part of an annual review or something that is kind of not queued up for a presentation or the, CN the TOC is pretty busy, then it might be an async review. So that Joe and, and Liz will kind of coordinate. Um, the other question I have is like, this part of the process is probably described somewhere, right? 
This last part about the TOC presentations is only described in this checklist because okay. we don't we haven't been through that yet. Yeah, that's that's all I need to know. Just find it's in the, it's in the template, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So basically, we're like, oh, there's this thing that we haven't done yet. <laughs> That, okay. we that we're expecting to we're expecting that in total we'll do but we don't really know whether it, it's going to be make sense for projects that have already that are already like deep in the cncf and it may be more like we are providing information that hasn't particularly been requested and then you know like it's sort of like basically the toc would like us to kind of oversee and coordinate with the security related projects as a top priority. And, but then some of them they're very familiar with and maybe they won't actually want to be presented at this particular time. So we'll, we'll, that'll be a, its own adventure. Great, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. And um, if there are urgent questions, shout out or chime in in the chat. But uh, um, Justin, I wanted to give you a chance to finish up if there's anything else you want to close with. Uh, I don't have anything really pressing. I guess there have been, I guess I think uh, Emily just posted a question if we want to discuss that. Um, so do we have a maturity measurement indicator for consistency or is this gut? Uh, wide range of adopters to me seems it could be Kubernetes size of adoptions or telepresence size. What is a wide range? Um, I, I think uh, so. This is, I think, an area that we had discussed and debated a lot. Um, I was actually pretty opposed to having anything related to adoption in here. Uh, because I think it is hard to quantify it. And it's hard in some cases to get really meaningful, accurate numbers about this. Uh, so I don't really know what to do in this case. I would be very happy for one of the other assessors to propose text for this part of the assessment document. Um, and we could discuss this, but I wrote draft text as I was just trying to capture everyone's thoughts. And that was the closest I could get to being specific, which you'll notice is exceedingly vague. Um, yeah, so. I, I'd like to see, and, and maybe this is just me, that the community maturity adoption not necessarily be included because, I mean, CNCF is probably going to end up looking at a, a wide swath of projects that may be brand new, not a whole lot of people know them super early in the adoption cycle, but can have a large impact on the community. And some other ones are just like Kubernetes. It, it, taken so long for community uh, kubernetes to get through the community and now like everybody's using it so perhaps going more down the maturity of from a development standards like and their development business practices and models how mature is the entire software development team if you look at the three waves of devops are they stuck in the first way trying to figure out what their product or service is or are they all the way in the experimentation rapid uh, deployment automation fail fast and all of that stuff and that may be a better thing if we're trying to provide maturity of a particular product because i as a customer trying to research and do all of these things may have higher confidence in an application that has a higher maturity in their development cycle and not necessarily care so much about user adoption. I guess um, I'd be interested in you talking a little bit more about this development cycle maturity, the three stages that I may not be familiar, the specific three stages, but um, when I'm evaluating adopting a project, whether it's used indicates a certain kind of maturity. You could have something that has very mature software development practices where it to presents itself as having good documents and, you know, like all sorts of things that make it seem really polished, but it's never actually been used in production. And that doesn't right. mean it's bad, right? Like that could be like, well, it's way better than me building it on my own but it is not like, I want to know that versus, well, companies that have millions of users are using it in production versus a couple of open source projects are using it on their production test sites. 
Yeah, and, and that's part of the struggle is when you start talking about maturity, either development or end user adoption, it's always like a snapshot in time from when the report is being written. So I think if you were to include it, no matter what, definitely publish the scale at which you're providing that ranking value. Um, if you're going to do one, the other, or both of them, it just depends because anybody can go to GitHub and see how many stars and forks and like active user community there is. Like, that's not hard. That's a Google search away if that. So it just depends if, if the group is intending to provide additional value above and beyond what is natively accessible over the internet or whether or not they're just regurgitating content for that time slice of when the assessment or the audit occurred. Well, the whole thing is a time slice, except for like the goals. I mean, even that can like, the feature set can shift over time. So it's definitely a time, a moment in time thing. Um, but I think that, at least from my perspective, like the number of stars is an indication, but it doesn't really tell me anything about, like just because developers like it, doesn't mean they're actually using it for reals. Yep. Um, and so the project actually saying, like this is all project, like we're not like going and interviewing all of their users. And so what I had written for the Intoto thing is like in production by X companies, meaning there's a number there or, you know, where like, which we have to, I need to go back and forth with Santiago and Justin Kaplis, but like it, it could be to our, you know, X companies that have, we talked like some concise way of saying X companies that have told us they're using it in production, right? It could be more than that, right? Or at least X companies. So that tells me something, right? Or, you know, versus we may have another, a sandbox project, which is not yet used in production by anyone. And those are, that is like, for me, a big differentiator. Whereas like OPA is used by, um, you, know, you know, like X would be, I'm guessing, right? Dozens or maybe hundreds, I don't know, but it's at least dozens, which is very different from three. And, but you might look at it and say, well, those three, you know, that are being you, you, you know, you have to dive in there, right? Like dozens doesn't, it doesn't, it just means like, do I look at this more? It's not supposed to be a yes, no. But anyhow, this is, this is a long way of saying this has been under great discussion. Um, but maybe you could speak more about these maturity models that you were talking about, which might be easier to articulate. Yeah, I think it's always um, hard because um, so I, uh, I was just going to say, like, people always end up doing maturity matrix in, like, any company that I know of, and it's always hard to, like, distill that into just a few words. Yeah, it's typically easier to come up with a standard unit of measure, post it publicly as a reference point, and then refer to a particular value uh, within a published document for whatever that speed in time was. It just... And then as you go through, you can update your independent matrix for like how you're deriving the values um, and make adjustments therein. It just, it's hard when um, there isn't another thing to go off of and the landscape is so large and it varies so much for what people look at without having something to point to and say, this is our true north. You're, you're gonna continue to have that problem as new people come into the project or come onto the effort and start asking questions about like, well, what does that actually mean? How do I interpret that? How does it apply to my company? So in the, what, so just to be clear, would you, given your experience say, until we have such a thing, don't say anything? No, I would argue Usually, uh, so the, this is the policy lawyer side of me, so uh, and unless other further guidance is provided or subject to change or some other caveat that you get at a jail free card for that date and time or refer to it by a particular date value that the maturity of a particular project is considered um, good given this time slice or given this date, given this set of criteria, we're using, I don't know, whatever standards body is providing metrics for us to make this decision off of, but always have that kind of caveat, that get out of jail associated with anything that you're posting in those documents because they can and will be subject to change or they may be overwritten by a new policy or a new requirement, whatever it is that you're doing. So not saying get rid of it, 
it does have value. If I'm doing an assessment, it's certainly easier for me to go to one place read all the information I need to about a thing and then go and talk to a, like my technical lead or my lead architect about a particular project than to not have it and spend time doing research. So it, it's a trade-off. Yeah, I think actually the point about having a date on the summary is really important. So thank you. Yeah. I don't think that's actually in my doc, so I will fix that. Um, so Justin, we only have a, a few more minutes and um, I wanted to check in with Dan to see if he has anything or JJ in terms of forward-looking stuff before next meeting. That's all done. Excellent. Dan or JJ, do you want to chime in a little? Anything on um, anything we need to cover in terms of plans for the future? Um, you know, I, I'd love to see us get back on uh, track with the the white paper. Uh, you know, that that's the biggest uh, sort of tracking item. You know, now now that we're uh, you know, landed, we have the opportunity to uh, request those re resources and we were, um, you know, blocked by formal ratification uh, to, uh, to, to line that up. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow on that with Chris and actually um, maybe we could, um, let's, let's talk a little bit. I think we need, to, like, we, we should queue up a meeting in the upcoming weeks to go over the roadmap. So we've had we've had a bunch of um, sort of small group conversations about the roadmap, and mm -hmm. we've been corralling the GitHub issues. And so, maybe um, that might be a great thing to queue up for a future meeting. JJ, is there anything you want to touch on? No, I that's, saw what you. I gonna, that's what I was going to say. Uh, the roadmap discussion that we had uh, the other day, I think it'll be good to uh, good to get input from input from team uh, and. Uh, White paper, if you want me to. I it's I can super hard to hear whoever. Started. Okay, that's JJ. So let's um. So let's not dive into the white paper. Let's queue up the roadmap discussion, and as part of that, um, figure out how we're going to corral the white paper project. Okay. Um, but like, take it offline because we've just got a few minutes. Okay. Um, but thanks for mentioning those that stuff. I should have. I didn't think to talk about the future. Um, and uh, is there any other last announcements? I think there some people came in late. So I want to give a, a minute if anybody has anything urgent or interesting. All right. Well, thank you all for joining, especially the new people. If you're new, um, feel free to uh, uh, PR yourself into the repo as a member and welcome everybody and hope to see you all again. Yeah. See everyone. Yeah. Bye. 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 Have a good one. Thanks, sir.